perhaps no team sport places more emphasis on the individual as does baseball. And in the annals of baseball history, there may be no one more solitary than one Pete Rose. When Rose was playing, he was in a league of his own, atop the rankings for most career at bats, games played, and base hits. And for the past two decades, since embroiled in a gambling scandal, he's also in a league of his own outside the sport. 20 years ago, this August, Rose was banned for life when allegations surfaced that the former Cincinnati Red Star bet on baseball games. Rose voluntarily agreed to be placed on a list of players who are permanently ineligible to participate in Major League Ball. There were charges Rose finally publicly admitted to five years later. But in our number one story on the countdown, is baseball ready to issue a pardon and reinstate Pete Rose? Recent developments may suggest just that. Joining us now from Cooperstown, on our man on the ground, who has a job that's a lot harder than I thought it was, and a very familiar face to all of you, Keith Overman. Thanks for taking the time from your vacation. What exactly happened this weekend that all of a sudden we're talking about Pete Rose being reinstated? Well, first of all, Governor, I have to tell you, I like this show a lot better with you here than that <laughs> usual idiot they have hosting it. But. Um, the, uh, the, the, the stuff is all circumstantial. Bud Selig, the commissioner of baseball, still does not want Pete Rose anywhere near this place, the Baseball Hall of Fame behind me, or anywhere else in baseball for that matter. But there is increasing pressure that we saw this week that suggests that a lot of the people who influence Bud Selig will be trying to convince him that the time has come to give Rose uh, a chance at least to get in here at the Hall of Fame, if not back uh, in baseball in a paying job. And it's all circumstantial. Uh, Sparky Anderson, his former manager who hadn't talked to him in 20 years since Rose was banned, Sparky came by to visit with him at the baseball card shop which Rose was signing autographs at about a minute and a half from here over the weekend and with tears in his eyes said, you know, you made a lot of mistakes 20 years ago. It shouldn't detract from what you've done in baseball. Joe Morgan, who is vice chairman of the Hall of Fame, was here and talked to Rose for an hour. Several other of his former teammates, Tony Perez, Mike Schmidt came by to express some sort of support. And the most curious event of all, Governor, was that uh, how, uh, the, uh, the, the MLB chairman and uh, president, uh, chief operating officer and president, Bob Dupay, was seen in that card shop. And he, I don't know if he said, hey, Pete, you stink, or whatever he said to him, but he visited with him, too. So something's going on as much as baseball is mm. insisting that nothing is officially changed and the, uh, the 20th anniversary will come and go next month with Pete Rose still being suspended. Keith, you had a chance to speak with Pete Rose this past weekend. And what mm -hmm. can you tell us about your conversation and how what was his mood like? Well, it was very strange because Rose is usually anything but taciturn on this subject. He will tell you how much he deserves to be back and what a benefit he would be to the game. And he was giving one word answers to questions. Mm. He said he, he, he underplayed what Morgan was doing here. He said that the visit with Sparky was, was very nice, but he didn't go into any detail. He just listed who was there. And it is so atypical to Rose um, that it suggests he is trying to, uh, his critics would say, put on a good uh, sense of behavior one way or the other he's being quiet where usually he is as, as loud as they come. And just as a, as a side story to this, if you can imagine such a thing, as we're talking about Pete Rose, not 20 minutes ago, Roger Clemens walked through this town because his son happens to be playing in a 12-year-old's tournament in a stadium here in Cooperstown. So you talk about, I don't know, the village of the damned, perhaps, over a course of a couple of days here, Rose, then Clemens in just a uh, four-day period. Speaking of all that, gambling has always been biggest, uh, baseball's biggest taboo, going back to the 19th. 19 mm -hmm. Black Sox scandal and before, but the use yep. of performance enhancing drugs, which Clemens has been accused of by some of the game's most brightest stars, has cast a cloud of suspicion over the sport. Is drug use in baseball mm -hmm. becoming a bigger black eye for the sport than gambling's ever been? <laughs> It's interesting because it's so much easier for fans to relate to negatively than, than the idea of, of gambling. Well, what's the difference if you bet on a game or you bet on your own team? It, it becomes something that needs explanation. I think the performance enhancing drugs issue gets through to the fans pretty quickly and pretty directly. And the big problem with that, Howard, is that uh, as we look ahead in the next five, 10 years here, 
there are going to be fewer and fewer automatic Hall of Famers. This was a great, wonderful weekend. Ricky Henderson, Jim Rice, automatic guys that people love, and uh, you know the lines were around the block for them, and there were applause and cheers and good feeling all around. Maybe not so for the next five years of, of new Hall of Fame eligibilities until Greg Maddox becomes eligible. Ironically, it may be that Pete Rose looks not less guilty uh, for what he did, but less guilty in the context of what other players may have done with drugs. One of the things you wrote in your blog in, in about 30 seconds, which we have left, is that Hank Aaron is playing a major role in this uh, because of his friendship with Bud Selig. You want to talk a little bit about that? Very simply, Bud Selig worships Hank Aaron. He's one of his best friends. And Hank Aaron said publicly the other day here, it's time Pete should be in the Hall of Fame. Take that for what it's worth, Howard. Keith Elberman, working even while he is on vacation. Enjoy the rest of your time off. That'll do Thank it. Thank you, sir. Thanks for filling in. Thank you. It's harder than it looks.